Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another Stephen King review. Today we are talking about the dark half. Yeah. Uh, so this is one of my favorite Stephen King books. I'm just going to put this up. The reason for this is I'm a big fan of slashers and not maybe not noir, but uh, serial killer movies, things like that, and books. Uh, may maybe not so much in books, but I do like serial killer movies. Uh, this one scratched all those itches and... This one feels like I'm, I've been doing mental gymnastics to try to think of another one of Stephen King's books that feels like a slasher novel. I mean, he's got plenty of creature features. Um, so right off the bat, I want to ask you guys, what do you think? Is this one a slasher novel or is this one just horror? What would you consider this this book? Um, it, it's, it's one of my favorites for many reasons. Like I said already, the... Uh, the slasher elements, the serial killer elements, but also the idea of the absorbed twin. Um, you find out all this stuff. Uh, this is pretty much a spoiler-free section, but you per you find out right at the beginning. Um, Thaddeus, Thad, Thad Beaumont, I believe it's Thaddeus, um, but Thad Beaumont, he has surgery when he's a kid because he's been having migraines and uh, terrible pain, all that stuff. Uh, they take him in, they do surgery, and they remove an eye, some teeth, that kind of thing. Years later, Dad grows up. Um, he is a best-selling author under a pen name. That's another reason why I like this book as much, because I have numerous pen names. Um, he ends up having to kill off the pen name to get out in front of someone who is going to blackmail him and release the name. Uh, of course, this book it was spawned because of the Stephen King, Richard Bachman uh, scenario where uh, King was writing under the Richard Bachman name and people even, even accused Bachman of ripping off Stephen King's voice until it finally, it finally came out. Um, so he used this one, another one, uh, that's like two authors kind of going back and forth, Secret Window, Secret Garden, which is more of a realistic take on this premise, and Stephen King does this a lot. He'll write one story, uh, one novel, and then he'll write a short story with basically the same themes, but flipping it, some, something is drastically different. So Secret Window, Secret Garden has no supernatural elements. This one is loaded with supernatural elements, but it's per it's pretty on par with uh, with this idea. You know, it, the, the, these two things really balance each other out. Um, the I, I hear people complaining about this one. Uh, the, the of course the the ending being a cop out. There, I, I, you, you hear this a lot with Stephen King stuff, but I just don't see it because the supernatural is there in the majority of his work, but for some odd reason there's still a group of people thinking that if you use the supernatural in any way beyond, you know, any way in the ending, that it's a cop-out. I don't feel that way, um, but I have heard other people say they just don't like this one. Um, for, for whatever reason. So I would like to know down there why. If you don't like this one, I'd love to hear from you. Um, because th this is one that I've loved since I think the first time I read it. I didn't go back and read my review and I can't remember the first couple times that I read it. But I think I've always enjoyed it. Uh, I like to d throw in the, the movie adaptations when I talk about these things too, especially if, if they're good. Um, and uh, Timothy Dutton, I believe that is the name, plays Thad in the movie adaptation directed by George A. Romero. Um, it's, a, it's a great movie, I feel. There's a scene with a porcelain face, and that, that scene's utterly creepy. Uh, I <laughs> All of the kills, the lighting, everything, I think it's a very good movie, so I'd like to hear from you what you think about that also. Here at the end, I want to talk about something that really isn't a spoiler, I don't think, but it's how sad storyline, how he ends up finishing his storyline after the events of this book. Um, he is only mentioned in passing in three other books and stories, but you learn everything that happened to him after 
this book finished up. I guess that's a little bit of a spoiler because, you know, he, he survives. But finding out his, what finally happened to him in Bag of Bones, oddly enough, um, because I believe Mike Noonan was friends with him. Anyways, uh, Mike Noonan is from uh, Bag of Bones. I believe that's the name. I always get stoned. I always want to call him Frank, but that's not right whatsoever. Um, the the punch of this book, there is a scene um, where vital parts of someone's anatomy is removed and stuffed in their mouth. Uh, that is a that that's a terrifying concept to me, especially being a dude because it's dude parts. Uh, and that scene bothers me, and it stays with me. Uh, it, it's one of those ones. It's the first time I ever read anything like that. Uh, the, well, the first time I read the book, uh, I have since read a couple other books, and I, I'm not saying King, in, you know, started that, you know, did that scene, and that was original. But uh, that scene really, really stuck with me, and it's it still to this day when I think about this book, I think about that scene. When I think about the movie, I think about that porcelain face. Um, Unfortunately, this one isn't as popular as it should be. It's kind of like Firestarter. It's one of those hidden gems that just sits there. Most people, if they've even, most casual readers don't go out looking for this one in Firestarter. Um, of course, King fans are going to read everything he's written. Uh, but most people have seen the George Romero movie. Um, I even spoke to one person a couple weeks ago who had no idea it was based on the book by Stephen King, even though it says <laughs> in the in the credit roll that it's you know at the beginning and at the end that it's based on a Stephen King book. But they said it's one of their favorite films. They had no idea that Stephen King wrote it. Um, this one it gets an easy five stars for me. There is absolutely no fault that I can find in it nowadays. Um, I'm actually looking forward to rereading it uh, pretty soon because I'm working on something kind of like it, and I would I, I would like to you know put my own twist spin that kind of thing. But at the same time, *Malignant* exists, the James Wan uh, utterly insane, crazy movie uh, that has the same uh, same pretty much plot. It doesn't unfold the same way, but it has the same plot. It gives me the same vibes that you get from like uh, uh, watching you know *Midnight Mass* and thinking of Stephen King's work. But those are all of my thoughts on Stephen King's *The Dark Half*. Uh, have you read the book or watched the movie? Let me know whether you liked it, you loved it, you felt mad about it. If, but if you felt any of those things, leave your details down there in the doobly-doo. Tell me why you loved it, why you hated it, why you felt mad about it so that we can have a discussion. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another Stephen King book review. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!